The start of my rare career actually started the year, the summer before I arrived here. I was, um, I was scheduled to actually take a training camp invite to the Atlanta Hawks and one of the requirements was I play in the summer league for them as well. So the second game into the summer league with them, I broke my foot and it was the medical term is a Liz Frank injury, which is a very serious injury. I had to have surgery in August of that year, the summer before I arrived, and I had two screws put into my foot, and I was out about eight months. You know, I, I was in, I couldn't walk for three months. I, I had another three months rehab, and I started to return to healthy about March of April of the next year, but I, and my, um, myself, I wanted to train, I wanted to get better. I didn't want to finish the year for one or two months at a different team, so I took the whole year off which in our business is not good because as I found out in the next summer I didn't I didn't have any job offers except for Rayer you know they, they and they offered me a tryout so I came out to Venice in July of 2015 I believe the end of July I had a two-day tryout um, I did some drills really I think Venice just wanted to see if I was physically okay um, basketball I haven't played basketball in a team setting in a month or in a year excuse me so I was obviously going to be a little behind in that. I've only been training by myself for the last three to four months. So came out here for two days and I guess I passed the, I passed the uh, tryout and they offered me a contract and I was back in two to three weeks for my first season here. Um, so it was a, it was a long story, and like I said, I'm grateful for them because I I don't know where my career would have wound up because they were my only offer, and it was a tryout to start with, and as they say, the rest is history after that. In my second year here, when we uh, we arrived to the final four of the Champions League, and that's obviously the year we won our first championship. Uh, we had a, we had a very good group group of guys. Uh, we were young. I think we were motivated. Uh, it was just a really good mix. But we also had some really good veterans, such as Jeff Vigiano, Ben Ortner, Tomas Ress, um, along with young guys such as I'll consider myself even younger, late twenties and. Melvin Edgem, Tyrus McGee, uh, Ariel Filoy, you know, we had a great group and I'm missing some names and I apologize for that, but uh, we really, you know, there was no egos on that team uh, and I think we really improved from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. I don't think anyone would have picked us to win a championship and go to the Final Four in the beginning of the season, but I think as time went on, we really, we just, teams that win championships at certain points really just come together. have a natural confidence with each other and I think when we did qualify for the final four of the Champions League I think that was the first moment that that team realized wow we, we can be we can be really good and have a good finish to the season we didn't we didn't win a game in the final four that year but uh, I think that experience helped us a lot going into the Italian League playoffs that season and um, it was tough you know the playoffs the playoffs are always tough and the teams that win the most in the playoffs can execute the best under pressure and I think our youth helped us because you play every other day you know you need to have some youth to recover yeah I, I, that, that team was special because I think we just we got hot at the right time especially at the end of the season and it translated into the first championship here Yeah, you know, the finals were tough. Trento had just beat Milan in the semifinals. You know, we had a tough semifinals with Avellino, and 
They were coming in very confident. They were very, very good at putting teams under pressure and playing their style. And they, they were very, a very difficult team to play against. And the series, you know, it went, I think, one to one, two to one, two to two, back and forth. And game five, you know, we were, it felt like a game that we weren't going to win. I feel like we were losing the whole game. Shemon Shields, marcato da Bramos, forse era un fallo qui da parte del Greco. You know, I myself particular, I don't think I was having a great shooting night. I think the score was 60 to 50, you know, 50, 60, so a very defensive game. And, um, you know, I remember, you know, I was Dustin Ho getting fouled and, you know, looking up and I think we were down one or two. I don't remember exactly, but he down one and, you know, okay, he makes two, we're down three, he missed one, he missed two. And, you know, we didn't, I can't say that we really had a play called on that last possession. You know, the, the ball got in Ariel Filoy's hands and um, he, he's a great creator. And I think, you know, as a, as a shooter, my job that I've always done is try to find an open space. And during that play, particularly, if you notice, he was kind of alone. I think Ho, Dustin Hogue was guarding him and my man, another man had tried to switch. And at that moment, I, I tried to rotate behind him as he was driving and I think I got just enough space um, for them to realize where I was and they met they realized too late and questa ultima azione dell'Umana Reyer con Ariel Figlioi marcato da Dustin Oak 13 12 chiede l'accelerazione anche il presidente Brugnaro poi Bramos da tre punti la tripla di Michael Bramos meno di 7 secondi you know, I, I was lucky to make a shot because I, like, I don't think I think I was maybe one for eight that game. I didn't have a great shooting game, but you know, everything about that shot felt great, and I'm just happy it went in because that propelled us to Game Six. I think it gave us a lot of confidence going into Trento and played another tough, great game there, and thankfully we were able to close out the game there and win the championship in Game Six. Oh yeah, so actually after game five, the next the next night, or I believe the next day we traveled up there and that night before the game you know, I started feeling a little sick and I, I got a, I had a fever and it was, it got up to 40, 40 degrees and I felt awful. Um, you know, I think uh, Pero, or, or Perich was my roommate and, you know, he kind of, he looked at me and he had a look of, you know, horror on his face, how bad I looked. And he went downstairs, told his staff, you know, I need to, he needs to get a new room so he doesn't get sick. Uh, but Mike looks terrible, you know, but I was sweating. I felt awful that day, but in my mind, you know, I had to play because I wanted to finish because I don't know if I would have been able to play in game seven, you know, I, with the way my sickness was going, I didn't know. So. You know, I took some medicine before the game, didn't feel great, and got through it, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy I did, because as tough as it was, it, it, it felt great to, to, to win that game. Anderson, who is going to attack, the score of Figlioi, quasi pallavolistico, for Michael Bramos! Melvin Ejim, the ball out, for Bramos, who si prende ancora the triple, and the mette! The mette di nuovo! The ball of Sutton, who comes out, poi si prende la tripla, la sbaglia! La palla colpisce la struttura! Campione d'Italia! Campione d'Italia! Campione d'Italia! Campioni! 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 After that, the, I ended up leaving the next day, still sick. You know, I, unfortunately I had to miss the parade, which would have been an awesome experience. Thankfully I got to experience it two days later, or two years later, but you know, my, my second son, Lucas, was my wife, Megan, was, was pregnant at the time and she was getting some signs that the baby could be coming soon. So the next day I, I had to take off, fresh off of the, I think we won in Trento at 10 o'clock that night and I was on a plane the next, nine, next, next morning at 9 o'clock. Yeah, 
the 2019 experience in the playoffs, I don't know if I've, well, as a basketball player, I'll never, obviously being finished, being done, but to play 17 games and I think it was 36 or 37 game, 37 days might have physically been, and mentally, maybe the toughest thing, you know, a basketball player can do and have to go through. And when each game is high pressure, uh, we, every series, we went to the last game and we won every five, game five, game uh, versus Trento, game five versus Cremona, and game seven versus Sassari. And uh, the first championship was great, but the second championship, I think with the degree of difficulty that it took to win that, I would say was a little bit more satisfying just because honestly for myself, it took me a good two to three weeks after that just to recover because of the the toll our body and our mind takes uh, through six weeks of every game being high pressure in your body, um, going through what it goes through. It's hot, our gym was still hot at the time in Taliercho, so uh, it was a very tough experience, but it almost made it that much more gratifying um, to take each series of that game five, game five, game seven, because that's a special thing that not many teams can say they've done. <laughs> That year I was fortunate enough to, every game five in Trento, Cremona and Sassari was probably my best game of the series, to be honest, um, in each of those playoff series. I, I don't know how to explain it other than just the will to win. You know, I, none of us as competitors wanna, wanna lose, and especially when you get to that last game when this is it, you know, your season's over or you go on, or you win the championship. So uh, I just mentally tried to stay as clear as possible. And But just when you get on that court, it's just a feeling. You know, it's hard to describe uh, to people. But on moments like that, you're just so locked in. You don't really, I want to say, realize what I was doing at the time. But it's just the will to win. And that's, that's what happened in those games. Italian 2020 when we won in Pesaro was another special moment and that was unique because in my time here in Rayer we never before those years we never even won a game in the, in the Coppa Italia so I think the first game we won against Bologna as exciting as it was it was almost like maybe the hardest step in that tournament for us was winning that first game because we've never done that before and uh, Bologna obviously one seed great team and we won Austin Day made a great shot at the end and then we get Milano next next game and another great team. Uh, we, we played a great game there. Uh, and then we had Brindisi who was also having a great season at the time. And it's almost, you know, that was, that season up until that point was up and down, but those three or four days, we really played a high level basketball. And it felt like the years passed when we won our championships because everything, everybody knew what to do. Everyone was having great games and everyone was doing exactly what they needed to do in their role. And it was unique because I, that's the only time um, in my time here during my eight years that we won a Copa Italiana. So that'll be special in a different way. You know, the records, like I've always said, I'll probably appreciate them more now that I'm done. Uh, first thing first, I'm thankful, you know, I had some injuries, but for the most part, I, uh, having these records shows that I was able to stay healthy for a lot of the time, which is important, and I'm thankful for that. Um, just just playing, you know, I, I'm not a player who ever played for the records. I, I, now that I'm done, obviously I'm proud of them, but uh, it's also a thing, you know, points, my teammates, you know, they do a great, uh, if you're not going to score without your teammates, basketball is a five on five game and um, I've had guys set screens for me, you know, just the, the plays, the, the tactics, so I also have to give a thanks to my teammates, my coaches, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a group effort. Um, so obviously I can say that I'm proud of them, but 
For me, it's never been what I've played for. Zia, che loro vorrà il tiro per vincere. Stone per Day che cerca la penetrazione. Sbaglia il tiro. Il tapin di Bramos a due decimi dalla fine. Il sorpasso dell'umana Rayer Venezia con l'uomo che non ti aspetti nella maniera che non ti aspetti. I mean, for me, the best feeling, my best game, due to the, the moment and the pressure, I think will be Game 7 with Sassari in the 2019 championship, just because I feel like my impact that I had, not only with my scoring, but just all around, I, it, the feeling I had that game, is, it's very hard to explain, especially in the third quarter when I think I made three, four threes in a row, and I think it kind of probably finished the game. Falli, l'attacco di Marquezens, che prova a sfruttare il blocco di Watt, poi lo scarico per Mazzola, ancora Watt, va da Michael Bramos, ancora non si è mosso il punteggio, ci prova Bramos, con la tripla, la tripla di Michael Bramos! Stone, che vede un varco, va dentro, poi scarica, Bramos la pinta, la tripla, e il canestro da tre punti, e il quarto di Michael Bramos! Otto punti per Bramos! La palla arriva a Bramos, poi Mazzola per Stone, cambio lato, Bramos dall'angolo, arriva la tripla, incredibile, Michael Bramos dall'angolo, la tripla del 50-32, difficilissima la tripla di Michael Bramos. Attenzione adesso si va a vedere. At that moment, and when you do that in a game seven in a championship moment, um, I don't think I can say that I've had a better game than that. I've had games where I've scored or feeling, but as far as how big the game was, for me, that would probably go down as my best game in the Rayer jersey. Rayer, 2 più 6, attenzione a Dustin. Oh, la stoppata di Michael Ramos! Blocco e riblocco di Watt. Ace, penetrazione, passaggio schiaccio a terra per Watt che sbaglia, segue il rimbalzo offensivo, ributta fuori per Bramos che è libero in punta, si alza e spara, scrive te tre, Michael Bramos. To be honest, when I arrived in Rare, I, I didn't know, I didn't plan on, I can't say I planned on being here for eight years, you know, things always change in our lives, but you know, in our profession it's not, it's not common to stay on a team for this long, especially as a foreigner, so. As the years went on, I realized, you know, how special of relationships I had with people here, and for myself, that's important. You know, I've always said, and I told the team this at the end of the season, that um, relationships for me are more important than any basketball game, and um, I, I have friends for life, you know, from, from these eight years here, and I truly believe that. You know, I, I can't even name, I could, it would take me 30 minutes to an hour to name every single person individually who I have a, rela a great relationship with and I'm very thankful for that and that's one of the reasons that you know I stayed for that long because when you you know when you work in a job with people that you truly care about and you have great relationships with you know I've told people in the past that you know it, it's not work for me you know I've truly enjoyed coming to the gym every day and seeing the same people you know from you know from the bottom to the top everyone you know I treat everybody the same and I had a great relationship with everybody so Um, I'm truly thankful for that, you know, that, that was one of my greatest um, reasons for being here is I, I love the people that I worked with within the Ray organization. And as far as being an example for the kids, you know, it's, I go back to my childhood, you know, I, when, you, when you're a kid, you know, kids look up to people such as us, professional athletes, uh, you know, I had my heroes growing up, I had my favorite players, and I just tried to i always try to set a good example because you never know who's watching, you know, it's, you know, I have my own family, you know, my kids are watching me, I try to set a good example for them, I try to set a good example for everyone. Just because it's, it's rewarding to watch the excitement of kids, you know, I don't consider myself, it's, it's hard to say this and I know people won't understand this, but I don't consider myself a celebrity, I don't consider myself a hero or but when I see kids' faces, you know, after the game, when they come up to me and, uh, you know, the, they look at me like I used to look at some people, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling. And uh, the fact that I can give them a high five or smile or give them some advice, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you don't take lightly. And I, and I always tried to just set the best example I could for all the kids within the Ray organization and anyone, you know, anyone who was watching the games. You know, 
I know that a basketball player, we, we do work hard, you know, it's not easy on, on your body physically, you have to train every day, but at the end of the day, I've always said, you know, basketball is a, look at the children, you know, the children play it for fun, the kids, you know, I played it for fun, I don't consider this, I feel blessed to consider this a job, but truly working, you know, it's like a, going back to the people, you know, you see people you truly enjoy, do we work hard? Yeah, we work hard in practice, but it's still playing a game, a child's game that I've been blessed to play since, you know, like my dad said, I've been playing organized basketball since, you know, six, seven, eight years old, and I'm going to turn 36, so almost 30 years, you know, there's not many people that get the chance to play a, a game for 36 years and, and have it as your job, so uh, I've, I've told people in the past, you know, I don't feel like I've truly worked a real job because it wasn't a job to me, it was a, a passion, it was fun, you know, it was, of course, there's moments where it's not as fun, you know, injuries, you don't feel great, but in the whole picture, you know, I've, I've been blessed to play a game for 30 plus years and, and as, as part of a career. As a child, you know, I, I loved basketball. I played other sports, but basketball was always my, my first love. And growing up in Michigan, right outside Detroit, the winters were very cold, a lot of snow. Um, so we had a basket in our driveway, and you know, my dad always told me, well, if you leave one ball inside, you keep that one warm. And when the ball gets cold, it's it stops dribbling. So I would go outside with my gloves, my hat, and you know, last as long as I could playing outside. And once that ball stopped, I'd switch the balls. And you know, it's, it's just, when you have a passion like that, put cones out um, in the driveway. I just, I always, for fun, whenever I wanted to go outside, you know, I would just go outside and play basketball. And you know, to this day, that's carried forward. And you know, I think I've made a statement in the past that when being asked about how do you perform, you know, in, in pressurized games or, you know, the playoffs and, for me, you know, if, if if you put so much time and effort into something, and this is really in any profession, but especially in our job, you know, if you succeed, you go into the game, you've already shot hundreds of shots, you've practiced, you've prepared mentally, you, you can be satisfied as long as you give your, as best effort as you can, you can be satisfied with a win or a loss at that point. You know, I don't have any regrets in my career as far as going into games because I feel like every game I've prepared myself, I've worked as hard as I could. And if I score, if I make the shots, great. If I play good defense, great. If I don't succeed, you know, it's okay, it'll hurt. But, you know, I, I don't consider it pressure when you prepare yourself as, a, as an athlete the best you can and then going out to play is the fun part. Obviously, in my eight years here, there's two sides of it. My family, you know, my when I arrived here, I had my oldest son, Cameron. He was six months, so he essentially grew up in his whole time. You know, his whole life was, was in Venice, to be honest. And then I had another son, Lucas, who's five now, and so he did, he grew up five years here, too. And with my wife, Megan, you know, each year, it felt more and more like a home to us. And we have such great experiences, such memories that we'll hold with us forever um, in our lives. And we're super grateful for that. You know, my, my son Cameron, he said, well, how's our new, you know, how's our new sister Emma gonna understand we live in Italy? And, you know, we're just gonna have to show her YouTube videos. And, you know, it's, it'll be, it's funny, so, cause she won't have any of that experience, which, you know, it's hard to think about, but uh, it's just funny. You know, my family and I have been grateful to all the people here that we've grown close to and have great relationships to you and it will always it will always be a second home for my family and I and part of the reason that is you know the people we found too you know with the president uh, the owner Luigi Brunaro you know he's always been supportive of myself and like Fred Federico Casarine they both they were the ones who gave me the opportunity to come here when, when no one else did and uh, I'll forever be grateful for them. And you know, we, we have a great relationship. I have a great relationship with everyone. Uh, those two guys, you know, they, they kind of make most of the decisions with the club. And you know, I've never never come to a really a big a disagreement with them. You know, they've been great to me and my family during this time. Uh, 
you know, Walter, I, he coached me for seven years. We, we did a lot. We, we experienced highs, lows, you know, these, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for him for the time we had in, in the uh, seven years that he was able to coach me and the things we accomplished. Um, and then Coach Bahia came in with my, in my last half of the year. You know, I'm grateful for, you know, the last three to four months that he kind of rejuvenated me a little bit. And, you know, I was able to finish the season pretty healthy on my own terms. You know, that was, I'm grateful for that too. Uh, just everybody, you know, I could name, like I told you, I, I could sit here and name, yeah, I could name names for 30 minutes. Yeah, Julian, you know, he's, he's one of my you know, closest teammates and it's funny because me and him probably come from the most opposite ends of life, you know, as far as experiences before we got to Venice. But uh, we, I won't say we instantly bonded, but as time went on, I think what drew us together was two things, you know, our competitiveness on the court, you know, we both were fierce competitors that wanted to win. And I think that grew our respect uh, much faster than other teammates. And then two, he also had a son off the court who was the same age as my son, Jaden and Cameron. Um, they bonded and, you know, off the court, we started having, you know, time spent together, many life, you know, deep conversations and, um, you know, I just, I talk to him a lot, you know, he'll be in it like one, yeah, another guy that, I've, like I said, a, a guy from a long list of people in this club that I played with that will be my friends and, and family for life. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, I, I can't say that I look forward to this time, you know, I knew it was coming. Um, deep down in my heart, you know, I'm excited for the future, what's next, I'm grateful for the time that I spent here and uh, you know to the to everyone you know thank you for just making an impact on my life and I it won't be the last time you guys see me you know I'll, I'll be I'll be around in the future and I'll be around often just because like I said I have such great relationships with the people so I've heard that many a times and even though I don't, you know, I'm focused on the game, I can still hear it. <laughs> Te vediamo presto.